welcome back to my YouTube variety channel, Miss Linda St. Jones. But more importantly, sitting before you is my dear sweet friend that I haven't gotten to see in a year, the one, the only Father Philip Neri. Uh, we're at Notre Dame Seminary, but I'm just going to hand it right over to him to tell us what this is, ev event is all about. But I'll just say, yes, indeed, that's his art. I can't wait to hear about this. Okay, Father Philip, take it away, my friend. Um, this is the first major event for the Society of St. Uh, Louis the Ninth, which is uh, the patron saint of Catholic artists. So what, um, what we're doing here is trying to promote uh, Catholic artists in New Orleans, and we have all different kinds. We have, we have weirdo collages like me, and we have some beautiful um, abstract and modern paintings of Jesus and Mary, and we have woodworkers, and we have sculptors here. It's just it's fantastic. They just had a presentation on the, uh, the theology of art in the Catholic tradition, um, which, was, which was great. So um, this is the first of many of these kinds of events that we're going to be having. Uh, Dr. Jordan Haddad is the organizer of all this. He's one of the professors here at Notre Dame. Um, he's a dogmatic theologian. And he's the one that got all of this started. So we're very grateful to him for that. That is so awesome. And I'm just going to pan around the room at all the people here for the phenomenal turnout in Schulte Hall, who was one of our former Archbishops of New Orleans. So I have a great question for you. But this question is actually, excuse me, an idea from someone else. During the evacuation for Hurricane Ida, I was staying with some lifelong friends who are like family in Lafayette. My friend Carol and her husband Andy, they have four sons who are around the age of my nephew and godchild Ryan. And so they know I've written some of my own music, etc. And so the question every night, and so I'm, I want this question for you, was I felt like I was in some sort of being asked to teach a master class because her son Philip and Eric wanted to know what was my process for writing songs. So how very apropos for you, um, I've been doing a little what is my process series. I want to know, Father Philip, what is your process for this amazing art? You know what a fan I am of your art. And one of your pieces that, in my opinion, is modern Monet, modern Degas, hangs in my kitchen, my favorite color red. So, Father Philip, what is your process? For, for this be these beautiful creations. Well, <laughs> several of the seminarians are just here, and one of them asked me that question. I, I, I'll just tell you the truth. The, 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 basically, I get a canvas, um, I draw on it a bit, just to kind of get myself loosened up, and then I just start putting down pieces of paper uh, and, and gluing them down with, with medium, and um, I just keep going until I begin to see a pattern of some sort, and then I begin working around that pattern. It, a one piece can take an hour to make, or it can take me weeks. Oh wow! Because I don't really do this. Um, I don't really do this as a job. This is just something to get me out of my academic head. Yes. You know, something that's not reading, it's not writing. So um, I do it just as kind of a non-verbal, non-linguistic kind of way of expressing some creativity. That's awesome. So. When you sit down to do this, is there ever anything specific that's in your mind, or do you ever feel like some of the colors or the patterns come from anything, or does it sort of occur like you sit there with the easel and the magic just starts to happen? Yeah, yeah. I just sort of say, okay, I want this one to be darker than usual, so I'll put down some darker blue and some black, and then start playing with it, and then I'll say, oh, that's too dark, so I'll start putting lighter stuff, and say, oh, that's too light, so I'll start putting more dark. Or, um, you know, lots of lines in this one, so I'm going to start putting some circles or, you know, it's just constantly back and forth. Or I might put something on and then yeah. use a sanding block to sand it off. Uh, something like that, you know, something, put it on, take it off, round, square, something like that. Yeah. So, okay, then the next question that would sort of be a part two of the creative process. So that's pretty cool the way that it occurs, but... What's also cool is that I've noticed when I view your art that you post, you have titles. Yes. So now, where does that come from? Because that sort of sounds like creative process. Yeah. I didn't include the titles with these. I don't know why I didn't, but I didn't. Um, normally, I title my, my paintings when, I'm, when, I'm, when I declare them done. 
I'll look at the mass readings for that day. Yes. And I'll try to find something that maybe a three or four word phrase from the mass readings that I think somehow expresses whatever might have been expressed yes. in the painting. Uh, sometimes, the, sometimes it's really weird that the titles will match up with the piece. Yes. Uh, sometimes they don't. Uh, they don't, you know. Um, but that's how I do it. It's all mass reading. So it's all scripture. All the titles are scripture. And I love that. So then, so is it sort of, you're, you're looking at it and the scripture reveals itself to you based on what you're looking at. I absolutely love that. So literally when someone says you have an open canvas in which to create, that's your process? Yes. Am I correct about yes. that? Yes. That is yes. so amazing. So would you like to go through these and tell us the titles of each one? I don't remember them. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> My, that's okay. I, I, I ran over here this morning to put them up. Yeah. And I had to go back to the Priory. And when I got back to the Priory, I thought, oh, you forgot to put the titles out. And then I got busy doing other stuff. And so when I came back, I forgot them again. I understand. But they all have scriptural titles. And I do have them on my computer. Okay, so I love anybody, that. If anybody here buys one of these, or, yeah, I'll be able to email them or something, the title. So I love that. Yeah. Well, we absolutely must give some credit here where people can support your work if they would like to. So would you give that information again to our viewing public so that anyone that were, was not able to attend today that would like to purchase one of your beautiful pieces of art, how may they do that if they're not here? <laughs> yeah, um, You can uh, contact me uh, personally at ppowell at nds.edu Okay. That's my email address. Uh, and my um, blog, where I post my homilies, is uh, H-A-N-C-A-Q-U-A-M, punk aqua, at blogspot.com. Okay. And that way they can find out prices and purchasing and Absolutely. how to pick up their work. So... My dear friend, Father Philip, what else would you like to say about your work or this event? Or even maybe like to my friends who were, um, you know, asking about my creative process because they're all, they're a very creative family. What would you advise to anyone who is just starting to put their art on an easel or to music, to a keyboard, to singing? What would you say to them? Um, I would say... I would say, uh, don't be afraid. Uh, as, you know, as, as the scripture tells us, do not be afraid. Amen. <laughs> Especially, just don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. I mean, I, I, I have no training. I started this um, as a hobby. A friend of mine bought me some paint, sent it to me in the mail. And I remember I started on canvas boards, just sitting on the floor of my room. And I just started kind of pouring paint on the canvas and smearing it around to see what it looked like. And so I've kind of had to learn on my own with the trial and error what works and what doesn't. Um, and you just can't be afraid to jump in the middle of it, you know, and, and just go for it. Amen. Because you know what that reminds me of? So very long story short, I heard someone in an interview and they had signed up to be in a show. And then all of a sudden they asked the producer, wait a minute, you forgot, I can't act. And the producer's response was, no paralysis through analysis, no paralysis through analysis. So is that what you're saying yeah. to all future artists? No yes. paralysis <laughs> through analysis? analysis? That's right. You're not going to think yourself, you're not going to think yourself into creativity. And look, I, I swear I'm not, I'm swearing in front of a priest. I promise I am not Father Philip trying to plug myself. But I'll just say I use that line in one of my songs I thought, <laughs> because I thought it was so cool. This plug is for you. Thank you. This is for you. So art uplifts us, inspires us, and so forth. So what would you say you feel is the most important aspect of art, whether it be in our church, in our faith, or just to the world, regardless of what kind of art it may be? What do you think? It does well, for you know, God created us in His image and likeness. Amen. Uh, so one of the things then that reflects His image and likeness is for us to be creators. Amen. Ourselves. Whether that's in song, whether that's in sculpture, art, uh, whatever it is, whatever creative endeavor we're involved in, 
that is rooted in the fact that we are created in the image and likeness of God himself. So in a way, we're, we're paying tribute to God as our creator when we ourselves create great art. I love that! And then that, that sharing of the art with other people just continues the perpetual uplifting. Yes. yes. So, any final words? Because, you know, I could just go back and forth with you all day. <laughs> oh, and I want to thank you not only for inviting me to this wonderful event. I've been to many events here, but I can't thank you enough. I'm and, I'm, you. and I'm so happy to see you again, my friend. So, any final words that you'd like to say to our viewing public? Um, just keep your eye open for future events. Okay. And, um, you know, they're on Facebook and they're on this, the, the Notre Dame Seminary website. Okay. Um, any future events that you can that, that come across. And, and we have a great crowd here, so they're going to be a great crowd every time. Well, thank you for uplifting us, inspiring us for the interview. And, you know, I'm a mega fan. So um, I'll be uploading this later and sending a link to you. Great. <laughs> All right. You, thanks, Father Philip. <laughs> Bye, right. everybody. God Bye -bye. bless. Everybody. God bless.